John Hudson, the man, the myth, the sexy-haired legend underneath his fedora, joins us. Hey, you guys had a great weekend on the After Hours show, man. Congrats. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's it's a good idea. Good people. Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, fun things to talk about. Are you growing a beard? Uh, well, you know, every once in a while, you know, you, you got to kind of reset your goatee because, you know, you, 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 you can only trim for accuracy for so long. And every once you got to kind of reset, which means you got to kind of grow the beard out and then, you know, re, redraw the lines of, of, of demarcation and so forth. It's, a, it's, the, it's an elaborate process. So in other words, you screwed up on trimming your beard and now you're having to do the full thing to recarve it. Well, you, you screw up all the time, right? You screw up, you know, a couple of times a year and you can only, you know, you can only, you can only make adaptions for so long before, you know, you start, you know, getting like, you know, kind of crooked, you know, so. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, you're all familiar, well, right? I know. Yeah. My friend, we've had a busy uh, news section here over the last yeah. little bit regarding UFOs and, uh, you know. This is why we bring you in here. And investigative journalist Ross Coltart has teamed up with a really good friend of this show, Bryce Zabel. And they are starting Great a voice. new UFO podcast. Beautiful voice. But Bryce Zabel also has immaculate hair and a highly trimmed goatee. Highly mm -hmm. trimmed. Mm -hmm. Professional. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He almost exists to make all of us feel a little uncomfortable. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what's going yeah. on there? Yeah. So so this is so I have to admit this one, I'm I'm pleased. Um, I I was surprised. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be. Uh, you know, I mean, um, uh, uh, you know, um, there are certainly people out there like George Knapp who have you know had had a successful podcast. I honestly, I guess to me, I kind of um. I don't know. To me, to me, it's it's kind of like the analogy I would almost give is like when you see a a, a a someone who does movies take on a role in a sitcom. It's like you know this is kind of like a a, a more daily normal thing, and so it's just it's just kind of like a a surprising um, uh, turn of events. I think to me, just personally, but I'm very pleased because I mean you're talking about two gentlemen that um, are uh, by their the very nature of their personalities very well researched um very polished and and care tremendously about the quality of the product they produce and and so you combine those two together um you know you combine those two together on any on any topic pick it i don't care pick the topic it'd be a good team you, for this topic this is outstanding I mean, this is this and it's going to be a lot of fun to listen to. And it's it's kind of silly because it's like, you know, I, my, my initial reaction was, oh, go, oh, great. Another podcast. But, um, you know, I, I you know, my my, it, I, my understanding is that there's two episodes out already. Um, I purposely didn't listen to one yet because I, I, I wanted to kind of, you know, talk about it without, you know, a, a, you know, really biasing everyone one way or the other with how I, how I felt about it. But I'm excited about it. I, 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 I will admit that I am excited about listening to it. And I, and I think it's I think it should be good. And my big question will be, is it is it good, it's going to be like a temporary thing or is it something that's going to go on for a while? I think it's going to be a lot of information. And, Could you be. know, as, as this subject continues to morph, I really believe that these guys are going to be at the top of it. I really do. I mean, that is going to be one show that you have to really listen to. And it's going to be, it's not going to be a lot of woo people. It's going to be a lot of hard information, hard information. Well, you know, that's I interesting, Dave, that. because, because what you're alluding to is this idea that the two of them want to use this as a more dynamic and, and serviceable platform to deliver their research in in ch chunks that, as they choose to deliver it and so that that to me says that this is this is almost their um um you know their their you know th the hill they've decided to take you know this is like you know this is basically them saying you know this is what we're going to you know what we're going to fight on and this is what we're going to stand up to um you know that's that's that's, that's good stuff you know okay you picked up this really weird photo of a B2 bomber that looks translucent. What yes. is this all about? 
So uh, unfortunately, I have not been able to find the original, uh, you know, the person who originally found this. Um, it, it was it was posted on Reddit and uh, and it was you know through multiple you know redirected links and so forth. And um, and basically, um, if you go to the coordinates, so these pictures are not the pictures that were posted by the people. These pictures are pictures I took um, from my version of Google Earth. Um, and I even made a little movie like of like, you know, scanning around it 360 degrees. Um, it doesn't have any um, volumetric information to it. As far as the map is concerned, it is flat across the corn. OK, um, but um, it is it is clearly a B2 in flight. And due to the nature of the B2's height, and it's you know and it's a counterproductive measures and and the very fact that these satellites aren't looking for things like b2s um and the fact that this is probably a, a conglomerate of multiple satellites what you get is this very spooky rather beautiful image it's got a lot of beautiful rainbow to it um image of this almost translucent b2 but to me it's it's very interesting because this is something that is it's it's very obvious what it is it's there's like it's not it's not like there's any question what it is and um but none of the algorithms that block this stuff out caught it um and that says to me that there's hope <laughs> to me that that's what this says that, that what that says to me is, is that what this says to me is that there's hope that that somewhere on google earth there are some images that have yet to be found yet that might have a significant impact on what we're all working on if you Google Tech E Blog, that's T E C H E Blog, you can actually see photos of this from eight hours ago. Okay, this is this is incredible. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, mean, and if you and if you go, if you go to Google Earth and you put in those coordinates, you can go there right now and look at it yourself. And I suggest you do so before it disappears. Now, how did how did you find this photo again? Uh, it was just posted on Twitter. From some incredible. guy from Reddit, yeah, and I was like, "Wow, man, that is just that is astounding. That's just that is, and, and it's such a beautiful picture." Now, it my is, guess is, sorry, go ahead. But it, but it is scary, John. The fact that here we have a stealth fight, a uh, stealth bomber, mm -hmm. and according to Michael Schrat, there's there's heavily two armed, types. heavily armed. There's two different types of B two bombers. Mm -hmm. Out of the 21 that were made, some of them are supposed to carry some very advanced top secret capabilities that makes them just a tad more advanced than the original B-2 bomber. Okay. And I'm wondering if this is what we caught here. Because yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, um, I, um, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's um, it you know what what it, it's it's that's interesting. What you know, what's interesting about that is that there there are some capabilities of the B two that are not yet public, and there are some capabilities of the B two that are a teeny bit public, but not widely acknowledged. And um, and you know, even if you just consider the ones that are are whispered about. Some of them are pretty amazing, and so I wouldn't be surprised if some of what we caught here is is what those sort of technologies look like when photographed from orbit, right? Like, like that's the artifact that you create in a camera when you take a photo of it. I also think the thing was moving pretty fast, and it was probably taken by multiple angles. So there's probably a lot of things going on here. But, um, but I, it was super cool that someone found this. And um, and like I said, it to me it gives me hope that someone might find, uh, you know, something you know not from, from not from this uh, not from this globe, you know, flying around Google Earth at some point. All right, Stanford University's Dr. Gary Dolan has been working with DNA and brain effects of extraterrestrial contactees. What's new on that part? So it's it's not necessarily that there's anything drastically new, other than the fact that there's been a, a tremendous amount of debate going on, and 
um, you know, Valet's um, paper uh, has come out. And, and so and Gary Nolan has been doing interviews and so forth. And so there, there's some new information from the point of view of those of those interviews coming out. But the main reason why I, I wanted to mention it again is because um, it's it's not the easiest topic to absorb. Um, there's a lot of detail to it. Um, it, it's a fairly deep topic to get into. It starts getting into some pretty specific areas about the brain and brain structure. And, and you know, some of it is based on known data and some of it is speculative and you have to pay attention to where, where each side falls and so forth. And, um, and, and to me, it's just, um, you know, it, it's, it's, um, you know, to me, it's just, it's just kind of amazing. Like, you know, what, you know, what, they're they're doing there i mean it's just like i mean gary nolan's like just like a, ro a rock star so it's like you know um you know to me um you know the um uh sorry i lost my place here um you know the, well, i think the, you fell in love with D gary nolan and talking yeah about him. yeah yeah no no i mean i mean now the the thing the the so there's some big questions right there's some big questions like so one like one of the big questions is is it it, do, are these changes in the brain structure evident before, right? And they somehow attracted the attention of others. And that's why we see this correlation of, of contactees having this brain structure. Or did somehow through contact experiences, was somehow their brain structure somehow encouraged to develop differently to then facilitate easier acquisition and, and pick up later or, or easier uh, information delivery and, and, and retrieval later. Um, and, and that's the problem is we don't know, we don't, we don't have any cases of, of, of a kid who, you know, we've been able to test and we've seen this structure in them. And then we've said, okay, well go forward and live. And if you ever get abducted, come back and let us know. Right. I mean, we don't, we don't, we don't have the ability to kind of measure in that direction, which is, you know, part of the problem. Right. Um, but, you know, I think that, you know, I think that one, I think that, that it's, it's huge that we're finding um, physical, um, physical correlations to contact experiences lasting correlations that's huge the fact that there are similarities between this and havana syndrome is very very interesting and i think a, a big um foreshadowing for things to come as to what we're going to start to learn and um and i think that there's also a, a completely flip side to all this research which is that there's now there's at least for for some of us there's growing hope that for the percentage of people that believe that they're having contact experiences that don't want to be having those contact experiences, that this is going to lead to the ability, hopefully, to finally stop them. And that's really what I'm hoping for. Well, we will soon see. We will soon see. John, thank you for a great unbiased UFO report. We'll talk to you very soon, buddy. Yep, yep.